All right, the recording is started. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to our very special spiritual weather report, uh, an impromptu call this month. It's March 22nd of 2020, and we're going to be talking tonight about the coronavirus and looking at it from a spiritual perspective. So I, I really appreciate your joining us, and um, we're just very happy to be here. I want to paint a little picture for you. I'm here in South Africa in our living room. Leslie and I are here together, and we have some friends joining us. So we have a living room with people. We're sequestering, as I know most people on the planet are right now. We're practicing um, our keeping space to ourselves. So um, we called for this this gathering because I received a number of requests from people asking for a spiritual perspective on the coronavirus. And, uh, you know, this is an unprecedented time. We're having a global wake-up call right now. So we're really happy to be gathering in community with you virtually. It's, It's actually amazing that we can do this, especially given that uh, we can't really gather in person with anybody. So, um, so we're delighted to, to be with you, delighted to reconnect. I know we have many more people uh, than normal tonight, and people from all over the world are calling in. I, I know many of our friends from Brazil are calling in today. Um, I know things have uh, hit pretty hard there. Um, so we're, we're just delighted that this can be a global call. And uh, the way this works, in case you've never joined us for the Spiritual Weather Report each month, it is a free call every month that we offer. And we start with a guided meditation, and then I share a few things um, about the prevailing energies and the, the spiritual aspect of what's happening in the world right now. And we look at the tools uh, that are needed to help us thrive in challenging times. And then we open the mic and we have time for questions and sharing. And we always conclude with a a brief prayer or guided meditation, depending on how much time we have. So before we begin our guided meditation, I just want to say uh, a little bit more about how the call works in case you're new. And that is that, as you know, um, Leslie is remaining in silence now. And I'm the one that speaks. And Leslie gives her transmission of Shakti while we're talking and while we're having our call. So we invite you to be meditative throughout the call and receive the transmission that's coming to you from the bottom end of the Nilotic Meridian here in South Africa. It's a powerful energy. And we're sending it to you wherever you are. And whether you're with us live or whether you're listening to this as a recording in the future, it really doesn't matter because we're all part of a field. And we're all connected in that field. And in that place, time and space really don't exist. The only place time and space exist is in the third dimension. So we invite you to relax and tune in to these other levels of reality beyond time and space where we're all connected in the heart and in love. And we'll all be receiving this transmission of light that comes through during the call It comes through when we're meditating and even when we're talking. So I invite you now to close your eyes and take a few long, deep breaths. And let's all relax together. Just feel and visualize all the beautiful light and life force that surrounds you coming into your body with each inhale breathing it deep down into your lungs, clearing out any stale, old energy, breathing out the shadow. Breathing in the relaxation. Breathing out any worries about the past or the future. Breathing in the present moment, being right here, right now, nowhere to go, nothing to do. 
just giving yourself the gift of this present moment. So continue your long, slow, deep breathing, relaxing and letting go. And feel, uh, visualize a warm liquid pouring over the top of your head like honey pouring over you, relaxing every muscle that it touches. Feel your scalp relaxing and your forehead and your whole face, all the muscles around your eyes and your ears, nose and mouth, the jaw, the back of the tongue. Feel yourself deeply letting go. When we relax the back of the tongue, a whole region of the body relaxes, the back of the head, the neck, the shoulders. So just spend a moment focusing on the back of your tongue, relaxing that area, letting go of any tension. Feeling the honey pouring over your neck and shoulders, your upper back and your chest your arms, all the way down to your hands and your fingers, just letting all the tension go. Feel the honey pouring over your torso, over your abdomen and your lower back, all the way down to your hips and your pelvis. Feeling the psoas muscles relaxing. Those are the muscles that run down the front of your hips on each side of your body. And the psoas muscles are a place where we hold a lot of tension. So if you can focus there and just feel them melting and relaxing and letting go, you'll feel that whole region of your midsection relax. So just focus there for a moment. Ah, breathing in the light. Remember you're breathing while we do this. Breathing in deeply. And feeling the honey continuing to pour down your legs, relaxing upper legs, your knees, your lower legs. your ankles, feet, and toes. Just feeling all the tension being swept away, dropping away. And now I'll be silent for a moment or two while we all scan our bodies one more time. Just take a look at your body from head to toes and breathe light into any place that is still holding tension. And release any stress in the body, any fear or tension or stress. And let's all remember as we relax that relaxation is the foundation of the enlightening of our consciousness. It's the relaxation that allows us to awaken spiritually. And sometimes we forget that. We forget how important it is to just let go and relax. So I invite you to give yourself that gift. If nothing else happens for you on this call, at least relax. And that's a very big thing. If you can just let go and relax, it's bigger than we realize. And now I invite you to put your attention on the root chakra. The root chakra is at the base of the spine. 
between the anus and the genitals. And I invite you to put your attention there so you just feel what's happening in your root chakra. And notice that as you gently put your attention there, the root chakra naturally opens and relaxes. It's automatic. And it's okay if you don't feel it. Just set your intention that you would like that to happen and one day you will feel it. But for right now, just relax and open that area as much as you possibly can. And drop your grounding cord down into the earth, all the way down to the center of the earth and connect with the center of the earth And feel the beautiful earth energy beneath you, supporting you. Just take a moment to feel where your body connects with the chair and the floor. And just be with that. Feel the gravity pulling you down towards the material world and the earth. And feel how you are supported from beneath by Mother Earth. Just like a little baby in the arms of its mother. Just relax completely and let go into the arms of the mother. Feel yourself letting go and relaxing like a little baby. Completely safe, completely held, completely at peace. With nowhere to go and nothing to do but relaxing into the embrace of Mother Earth. Feel what a gift this is. And now draw the earth energy up into your body through the soles of your feet, up your legs. Feel this beautiful grounding, anchoring energy coming up into your body, helping you to feel very balanced and grounded. All the way up to the root chakra. And let's take this beautiful earth energy up the core of the body, the central meridian known in Sanskrit as the Shashumna. So let's draw the energy up to the navel chakra, feeling the healing and balancing as we pass each chakra up to the solar plexus chakra, up to the heart. Pause for a moment at the heart. Feel how the heart opens and feel how there's joy and love here. You might feel yourself start to smile. You might start to feel yourself buoyed up, raised up, lifted up. And if you feel like putting a smile on your face, do that. Just let it happen. Because when you smile, there's a chemical reaction and the endocrine system puts out all the happy hormones, all the chemicals that make us happy. Even if you maybe don't feel happy, if you're maybe in fear, try smiling and See if that shifts how you feel a little bit.
Just smile for a few moments and watch what happens in your body. Watch how you feel a little bit more uplifted and happy. And let's continue drawing the energy up to the throat and up to the third eye and to the place in the center of the head called the Cave of Brahman. And in case you don't know what that is, it's a very magical place right in the center of your head where three glands reside, the hypothalamus, the pineal, and the pituitary. And you can find it by drawing an invisible line back from your third eye, which is the point between the eyebrows and slightly above, and then also draw an invisible line between your ears. And where those two lines intersect, that is the center of your head, and that's where the cave of Brahman is. The cave of Brahman, if you're not familiar with it, is a magical place where thought stops. You can feel when you found that place because your consciousness becomes slightly altered. Thought stops, and you feel an expansion of that energy in the center of your head. This is a place where we can connect with the cosmos. So I invite you to just take a moment and find that place in the center of your head and feel it. And again, it's okay if you're not feeling it. That's all right. Just set your intention that you'd like to feel it and it will come. One day you will find that place. And you know it when you find it. I can feel many of us on the call are in that place and it sends out a beautiful field of peace and calm and connection with each other, connection with the all that is. So just stay with this. And as you hold this beautiful place of peace, inner peace and stillness, feel how the crown chakra naturally opens. The crown chakra sits on the top of the head, of the head like a crown that a king or a queen would wear. And you can feel it opening. It's also called the thousand petal lotus. And you can feel the petals unfurling, opening one by one, opening up and out on the top of your head. So just visualize and feel that opening and opening and opening. Feel and visualize golden white light raining down from above. It's the beautiful celestial energy, divine energy, Father Sky energy. Feel it filling you up as your crown chakra opens up and out like a funnel on top of your head. Feel this light filling up your body and your aura like a gentle, warm rain, golden white light pouring down on you. It's a blissful energy, so it uplifts you. It makes you feel happy. And visualize every cell in your body like a miniature sponge soaking up this beautiful light. Trillions of little tiny sponges inside you soaking up the light. Feel it filling you up. Just take it in. While you fill up 
with this beautiful light of the divine. I invite you to also put your attention on the Shashumna, the central meridian that runs down the center of your body right in front of the spine. Just put your attention on the Shashumna and feel how you, your physical body, and your Shashumna is the midpoint between heaven and earth. This beautiful physical body of yours is the expression of your soul on earth. You are the connection point between heaven and earth. And the midpoint in your body is the heart. So you can put your attention in the heart or on the shashumna. But just feel that place where you are right between heaven and earth and both are filling you up. You're connected to both. And as you hold this place, as you hold the heart space, And as you hold the central meridian, feel the peace inside you. Feel how peaceful this place is. It's the peace that passes all understanding. It's the place where you know that you are okay All is well with the world, no matter what's happening in your world. Everything's okay. Because this is who we truly are, is this place of peace and love inside us. That's the energy we are made of, peace and love. So feel it, tap into it. Recognize that this is who you are. And while we all hold this place, I'm just going to say a little prayer and an invocation for our call today. We call on the Great Spirit, Divine Mother, Father God, the self that we all are. We call on the angels and archangels, the ascended masters, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, gods and goddesses, all the beings who surround us in the highest love and support, those who are known and those who are unknown. We invite you into this call and we ask that you please surround us in a cocoon of beautiful golden white light and love. Fill us up. And from this place, we send our love, our compassion, and our prayers for all those who might be ill, especially ill from the coronavirus, and to all their families and friends, for all the medical workers around the world who are doing so much to help, who might be tired and worn out. We send our love to everyone who's affected. We send light and the energy of our hearts out to the whole planet in this time of global crisis. So just feel and visualize that. Feel your love going out to everyone. And we give thanks for this opportunity to be together today. We give thanks for these beautiful bodies that we wear and this beautiful planet that we get to be on. We're deeply, deeply grateful for all the love and support we receive. Thank you. Aho. We ask also 
to please guide our conversation into the highest love, and the highest wisdom, the highest connection with the all that is, with deep gratitude knowing that this is so. Aho. And now I invite you to slowly wiggle your fingers and toes, slowly begin to open your eyes, come back into the body and to your space. And I want to welcome you one more time. Thank you so much for joining us today. For those of you who might have missed the beginning of the call, I just want to mention again that our topic today is the coronavirus, a spiritual perspective. And we're so grateful that we have this opportunity to share our love and share this time virtually. And uh, we, we've got a lot of callers today from all over the world. And we're going to take a few moments uh, at the end of the call to open up the microphone so that you can ask questions and share. This is a really special time for us all to be together. Leslie and I are here in our living room in South Africa with some dear friends, some beloved friends who are with us. And we're all holding space and uh, delighted to be with you. So before I begin talking, Barbara, I just want to check in with you to make sure everything's okay, you can hear me okay, and everything's all right. Everything sounds beautiful, Brad. I did see a while ago that there was one or two people uh, on the web who were saying that they were not able to hear, but my sense is that they were clicking on the wrong button. They were might have been clicking on a replay button because they were saying it was telling them it, it wasn't live. So I'm uh, okay. guessing that most of the people who are on are hearing you loud and clear like I am. Yeah, I'm showing that everything's working fine and the volume's fine and all of that. So I'm um, sorry that some people are having trouble. Uh, but, uh, Barbara, if you have a way of typing a response to them and giving them advice, you can do that while we talk. Does that sound good? Yes, that sounds great. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Thank you so much. Okay, so listen, everybody, I just want to launch in here. I need to say that, you know, there's so much to share. As I know you all know, we are in the midst of a global wake-up call. And this is both personal for each of us personally as well as collectively. And I think the obvious thing to say is that this coronavirus is an outpicturing for us of the illness of our society. You know, we have a, a sick society. We have been living in this system of separation, as we call it, the third dimension uh, or the patriarchy, whatever you like to call it. But we've been living in the system for thousands of years, and it's reached a crescendo. We've been talking about this um, for decades now. Leslie's been teaching about this for 30 years. And we all know that the systems are not working. It's, it's needing to be fixed. And so it's interesting that uh, we're all having to separate physically right now. You know, that's an outpicturing of the system of separation. And what's interesting and what's amazing is that you know, even though we're having to be separate physically, this is a time where we will be coming together more than ever before. We'll be experiencing the unity consciousness as a result of this more than ever before. And we're going to talk about this on the call. But I, I also I think it's important to say that uh, there are gifts and opportunities in what's happening as well as the challenges. I know we're all very aware of the challenges and um, we, we know how difficult life is. And we, as we were talking about in our guided meditation, you know, how uh, we have such, all of us have such compassion for the people who are suffering and people who are ill and the family members and friends of people who are ill. 
and all the medical workers and everyone who is affected by this in, in the negative. Well, we're all affected by it, but everyone who's really struggling with it. So, so there are the challenges, but there are also the gifts and the opportunities. And I think it's really important that we acknowledge that. We may not be able to see all of the gifts for some time. Uh, usually whenever we go through a crisis of some kind, it takes a while before we can actually see the gift and the opportunity in the challenge, but it comes. It always comes, and I, I think that's very important to remember in these times, that there will be a day where we'll be able to look back at this and we'll be able to say, wow, that was the gift we got from this. And it's the global awakening. That's the big gift, you know. Um, we are waking up. This is this is one of the milestone moments on the path, and we've been preparing for a long time, all of us. So certainly, I know that everybody has slowed down. We know that that's true. We're all getting to slow down, and that's a great gift. And um, as I was saying before, although it looks like this is the epitome of separation. You know, it, look, it looks like that we're becoming more separate than ever. But despite that, we are going to be generating this greater connection into wholeness and health. And I think it's, it's vital as we look at that to remember that nothing is wrong here. It, it tend, we te the ego tends to think something's terribly, terribly wrong with this picture. And it's very important to remember that that's just the ego talking. There's nothing wrong. A virus also has a purpose, just like all life forms on the planet. We all have a purpose. Every life form has a purpose, including the virus. And viruses and bacteria and all the, um, the germs and, and things that we're generally repulsed by, they too are trying to help us restore balance in some way even though we may not be able to see what that is in the moment and it maybe feels painful or scary or whatever. And I remember, uh, we're, as, I, as you know, as I've been speaking about, we're here in South Africa right now, and it reminds me of the vultures in South Africa because most of us are repulsed by vultures. You know, they symbolize death and they're kind of ugly and scary looking. And so... Uh, What's important to remember about the vultures is that they are an essential part of the ecosystem. They're a very, very important part of the ecosystem. They're the cleanup crew. They're the ones who bring balance to the whole ecosystem. They eat all the remaining meat on the animal carcasses that have died. Um, so that reduces the fly population, which reduces the spread of disease, and there's a whole domino effect because of the vultures. So I, I say this, and I know this is probably a reminder for most people, but I, I think it's important that we uh, we just note this. We put as we speak tonight, today. I know that a lot of what I'll say and a lot of what you will say is going to be a reminder for most of us. But it feels important that as we gather, you know, we put all this information, all the sharing into the circle, and we'll we'll make an offering of all this information that we're sharing. Um, an offering to spirit. So I feel also it's it's uh, important to mention that one of the gifts of this time is that we all get to see what's inside of us. We get to see what we're made of. We get to see what is our reaction to what's happening now. And I know it you know it doesn't take much searching to notice that there's a huge amount of fear. Uh, we talked a few weeks ago on our spiritual weather report call about fear because there's been this enormous spike in the collective fear around the planet. Um, and what we were saying is that um, the most contagious virus of all is fear. Fear is contagious. And our media tends to fan the flames of that fear. And so I'm sure we've all been feeling, if you're, if you're tapping into that level of consciousness right now, you can feel the frenzy. You can feel the hype uh, that the media is helping to create. And this is not a judgment. This is not a blame uh, on the media. 
but I think it's important that we note it and that we have to make sure that we're taking our media in small doses, that we get what we need and then we just stop. Because if we're, con if we're constantly connected to the media, it's not going to serve us. It's only going to fan the flames of the fear. So uh, I know it's important that we all pay attention to what's happening and stay informed. I'm not suggesting you not do that, but I'm just saying it's important that we're aware of what this does to the collective energy and inside each of us. So uh, generally, I, I feel like most people are in uh, – fear of not surviving it's survival issues that are up so fear of the financial markets collapsing um, fear of not being able to pay our rent or our mortgage fear of any kind of lack of resources you know there's all the panic buying that's been happening um, the all the survival issues are up for people and i in, i just finished leading uh, a two, a little over two week retreat here in South Africa. Um, I'm just going to pause for a moment to tell you about this because I, I feel like I'm in a really unique position to be sharing with you tonight. I was held with a group of about 12, uh, 11 people in a bubble of light that was so beautiful. And we were traveling around South Africa, going to many sacred sites. Um, I know many of you on the call have been with us here in South Africa, so you know what I'm talking about. We went to the Kruger Park, which is a national park the size of New Jersey or the size of the UK, um, minus Scotland and Wales. And it's vast and untamed bush, and all the wild animals are there. It's a very sacred site. It's what we call the African Dream Time. And we went to the White Lion Trust, and we sat with those sacred beings, the white lions, and we did many things. We went into the, the Blader River Canyon here where Leslie and I live, which is a, the third largest canyon in the world. And it's a, a very sacred vortex here where you can really feel the African dream time. So I've been held with my friends in this bubble of, of light and this African dream time energy for this entire two and a half to three weeks. And it's been so beautiful. We... We were able to hold that space and also feel the fear in the collective whenever we would tap in or people would contact their friends or families, especially in the United States and in Europe. Um, we would feel all the fear and the survival issues that were up. So it's, um, you know, again, there's no judgment about this. It's not saying that that's bad or wrong, but it's important to acknowledge and name it to see it for what it is. And one of the things that one of the group pointed out, which we thought was so funny, we laughed hysterically for a while about it, was the panic buying of toilet paper. Um, and when you, when you look at toilet paper and what it represents, it's a, a root chakra issue, right? And so that's what we're talking about here. The fear of uh, sur not surviving is the root chakra. So this panic buying of toilet paper has to do with the root chakra. And, and ultimately, it all boils down to the fear of death, the death of the physical body. And that's a very natural fear. And uh, the body carries that fear of its death. And again, like I said, this is a very natural thing. And yet, it's also important to remember that that's one level of our reality, is the body consciousness. But when we go into the soul consciousness, when we tap into that other level of ourselves, which is who we truly are, which is the soul, there's not the fear of death there. Because that part of us knows that we are not the body and that we've had many, many, many lifetimes and we've dropped the body many, many, many times. And when we drop the body, we go into this exquisitely blissful and beautiful afterlife where we can't understand why we had fear of losing the body at all because it's so wonderful. So 
I feel like it's so important that we talk a little bit about death, and, and it's not to be morbid. We don't want to uh, make this a morbid discussion, but just to remember the death of the physical body is the slipping off of an overcoat. One day the body dies. It happens to all of us. We can't escape without death, and it's like slipping off an overcoat, and it's easy to do. It's a relief when it happens. And the truth is it's really only hard on those who are left behind. It's very hard for friends and family uh, because we all grieve and we all feel the loss. There's nothing quite like having the physical body of a loved one nearby. We, we miss that. I also feel like it's important to remember uh, that death is not failure. Death doesn't mean failure. We tend to fear it so much and we tend to feel you know when somebody passes well anyway i can't speak for everybody but i just know many of us tend to slip into that egoic programming that says that death is a failure of some kind we didn't do something right something's gone terribly wrong and that's not true at all death is a graduation death is the end of one phase and the beginning of another phase it, it, death means that we completed what we needed to complete here on earth in this incarnation and we're ready for the next thing or the next adventure, the next game, uh, the next joyful experience. So I, I just feel like this has to be an important part of our conversation today to talk about that. So I also wanted to talk uh, a little bit about the downward spiral. Um, many of you on the call, people who have been with Core Light for some time, or if you've read our book, The Marriage of Spirit, um, you know about the downward spiral. And the downward spiral is essentially the egoic programming that takes us through all the negative emotions. And it begins with shock and shattering. And that's what we're that's what the world is experiencing right now. In addition to the fear that we're all experiencing, we've all been through a shock and a shattering, and out of that comes the fear and the panic, and we feel the chaos. We feel a sense of being out of control. Uh, we spiral down and feel disempowered or powerless, helpless. We grieve, we feel grief at the loss of what we gained. It feels like we've been separated from uh, God or separated from heaven when we go down the downward spiral, separated from our connection with the source, whatever you want to call it. So we grieve that loss. And then we go into our survival issues, all the fight or flight issues that reside down in the root chakra. And we can look at all of these states of consciousness as victim consciousness. It's the sense that we're victims. Something has gone terribly wrong and we feel victimized by whatever situation life has put us in. So I just, I share this with you. I, I put it out there um, just to uh, name what's happening so that we can uh, be aware of it and let it go. And, and this process of naming something and being aware of it and letting it go is the process that we call witnessing. And I know most of you have been with Corelight for quite some time, and you all know about the witness. Um, if you don't know about the witness, if it's been a long time since you've read the Marriage of Spirit book, um, I, I suggest that you read the chapter on the witness again. Leslie wrote a beautiful, beautiful piece on witnessing. And uh, just in brief, in case you might be new on the call, just, just briefly, uh, the, the witness is that part of us that we also call the neutral observer. And it's the part of you that knows that you are not these emotions. You're not the downward spiral. You're not all these negative emotions that are passing through you. You are the pure awareness. You are the perceiver through which the emotions pass. And your witness knows that fear is just a frequency. It's just one of the frequencies that passes through you. It doesn't last. This too shall pass. 
and the witness recognizes that this may not even be your fear. It, it might be that you're feeling the fear of the people around you or the fear of the, the fear that's in the collective, collective consciousness. And we're certainly all feeling that right now because there's so much of it. It's important to mention um, that the witness is that part of us that is directly connected to the higher self. And the witness remembers that we are the soul and we're not this body. We're a soul having a human experience. We're not a human body that occasionally has spiritual experiences. The witness remembers that we are eternal, that we're vast and timeless, and that, as I said before, one day we slip off that overcoat of the body and we return to the source, which is our true home. So if this applies to you, if you're feeling the fear, if you've been in the fear, the invitation for all of us right now is when that fear arises or any of the downward spiral states to just name them, name them and allow them to pass through you, uh, certainly not to suppress them or deny them or avoid them because that never works. It just makes things worse. So it's best to acknowledge it. And just remind yourself that this is not who you are and you're just letting these emotions pass through you and you're letting them go. And I know that nowadays we all have so many powerful tools, all of our spiritual tools and our toolkit. Uh, the witness is just one tool, but we should be using all of our tools right now and uh, using anything we can to process the fear and process the negativity so that we can release it and let it go. The witness is just one. I think the witness is the most powerful one, at least it is for me and most people I know. And, um, and by being in that witness and not buying into the fear, that's how we help alleviate the collective fear. It's how we uh, dissipate the tension in the collective. It's how we can practice this to dissipate this physical manifestation of the virus. The more we can be in the witness, the more we can uh, allow the negative emotions to pass through and not buy into them, the less time the virus needs to spend on earth essentially is what's happening. Um, the, the neutral observer is the one who is monitoring our judgments of good and bad. And so we tend to judge the virus as bad, and we need to get rid of it, we want to kill it, etc. And the neutral observer lets the judgment of good and bad go. The neutral observer or the witness finds the middle way through the judgments and recognizes there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong here. This is an experience that we've all chosen to have. We're not victims. And there's a purpose behind it. The virus has a purpose. We have a purpose to experience the virus. There's a perfection to this, even though it doesn't look like it. So this is the power of the witness, is that we remember this part. And so I guess... The kind of the main I, one of the main things that I w wanted to talk about today, and and I feel like um, we'll talk about a lot. I don't even know what's going to come up throughout the rest of the call, but one of the main things certainly is to talk about change, to talk about how this virus and how this extraordinary wake up call that we're getting globally is about disrupting our routines and habits. The routines, the habits, the patterns, these things are all aspects of the ego, of the third dimension of the system of separation. And it's time to change. And we've been talking about this for so long. As spiritual seekers, I know you all know that change is the key. Um, 
I know when we many of us who have been studying with Leslie for almost 30 years now, when we signed up for the very first course that Leslie offered, it's called the Spiritual um, Spiritual Warrior Training Course. The paper that one has to write to graduate from that course. Do you all remember what the paper is about? You remember what the essay question is on that one? I'm testing your memories here. The question is. How do you cope with change? This is a fundamental part. It's the foundation of the spiritual journey. How do we cope with change? And then it's about looking at how the ego tends to hold on to habits and patterns and routines. And some people say that by the age of, I think, 35 or 30 or 35, like 85% of our life is about habits, patterns, and routines. And so this is the journey. The journey of spiritual awakening is about change and about how we handle change. So here we are. We're in this amazing time when we're faced with this massive collective change. The world is never going to be the same again after this. Um, there's this whole shake up globally of the system. We've known for a long time that the systems aren't working on the planet, that they need to be fixed. And here we go. This is our uh, one opportunity um, to make the change. And it's happening personally for each of us, and it's happening collectively, globally. The wake-up call is for all of us. So, um, so as we as we look at this, as we as we look at the changes that we're all going to be forced into as a planet and as an individual, um, I think it's also really important to remember uh, what the ego is actually made of, and the ego is synonymous with control, staying the same. That's what the ego wants, and uh, the ego is made up of our thoughts and our feelings and the body and all these um, aspects that are associated with thoughts, emotions, and physicality. So what's really important to talk about today, I think, is to remember that all of our thoughts and feelings are shared. We think we're a private individual, we're separate from everybody else, and we're not connected. And that's the system of separation. That's the 3D, the third dimension. It's the ego. And so um, what we actually know to be true is that whatever consciousness that we generate, whatever thought forms we think, whatever emotions we're feeling, that's what we're contributing to the collective. So the choice that we're all facing right now is what thoughts are we going to think? What emotions are we going to hold on to? Are we going to buy into the downward spiral and spend a lot of time there? Are we going to choose to feel victimized? Are we going to choose to stay with the fear? Or can we rise up into a higher state? Can we generate peace? Can we generate love? Can we generate uh, compassion? Those things, the love, the compassion, the connection, the kindnesses, these are the things that are the antidote to the fear. And I know we all know this, and it's easier said than done, but this is our moment. This is our time that we can practice this. It's our opportunity to pull out all the tools in our spiritual toolkit, including the witness, and practice being the peace and the love that we want to see in the world. And we have all the tools we need. We have all the soul evolution we need. We have all the experiences. We have everything we need. Everything we could possibly need is here now. So, so we can practice what we know to be true. So this is just a reminder. I know, I know that we all know this. But I feel like it's, it's critical uh, that we talk about it in community and we support each other. There's such power in community. Uh, so that's the main reason we called uh, for this call today. Uh, 
So this is an enormous step on our journey. This is a huge quantum leap in the mass awakening, which is our destiny as a collective. Uh, the human experiment on planet Earth is about our awakening to our own power right now, to the power of love, to the power of peace, to the power that we have within us, the power of our thoughts. And, and I know many of you have read this amazing book by Dr. David Hawkins called Power Versus Force. We've talked about it a lot, and if you've studied with Corelight at all, we recommend it as a, 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 a – we require it actually for a reading in certain courses we teach – Power Versus Force by Dr. David Hawkins. And it's about, he's um, talking in the book about the power of our thoughts and how as we evolve spiritually and how as we live more in love and more in wisdom and more in gratitude and more in the higher emotions, um, the less we live in the lower emotions of fear and negativity, uh, the power of our thoughts increases exponentially. So I want to say that again, just in case there are new people on the call and you don't know about this. Our thoughts increase in power exponentially as we evolve and as we live more in the higher states and in the heart. So in other words, if there are a million people in fear, a million people thinking negative thoughts, it would take only one of us who is living fully in an open heart, who is able to live in love and joy and compassion and all these higher states to balance out the thoughts of maybe millions or hundreds of thousands or whatever of people. So I feel like this is critical. You know, uh, This is really the invitation to all of us. Our invitation is to spend as much time as we can in those higher states. And uh, I know we all know how to do it, right? It's easier said than done. It's so much about uh, the practice of it. And here we are. Now we've got time, right? We've got time on our hands. Suddenly, we can practice these higher states. Um, I'm going to shift gears. We could talk more about that, but there's still a few things I want to cover, and I'm looking at the time. We've got an hour left, so I just want to make sure we get enough time for sharing and questions and for our guided meditation and prayer at the end of the call. So just quickly, I want to mention a couple other things. Um, a dear friend of mine who's sitting here in the living room with me, Joan, sent me an email um, with a, a prediction in it from a psychic. There's a woman named Sylvia Brown who wrote a book in 2008, and I'm going to read to you what she says in the book. And I, I don't normally do this on these calls because, you know, we don't do predictions, but this is fascinating, and it gave me a little bit of um, hope, I guess, gave me a little bit of something to ground on here. So, in 2008, Sylvia Brown wrote in her book, In around 2020, a severe pneumonia-like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes and resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived. It will attack again 10 years later and then disappear completely. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I found that. I've, I know we've all been combing the Internet in our days here where we're at home, uh, listening to YouTubes, watching YouTubes, listening to podcasts, reading books, researching what this is all about. And I found that one particularly fascinating. So, again, we, we have no idea about predictions, but I found that one especially uh, helpful. I also just wanted to mention a practical thing. There were a couple of very practical things that came across my desk that I thought I would share, just in case you hadn't heard them. And one of the articles written by a med Western medical doctor said that um, one of the best cures for pneumonia uh, is vitamin C. And also zinc, but especially vitamin C. 
they, there was a study that was done at one point on people with pneumonia. And the people who were treated with traditional Western medicine in a hospital uh, versus the people who were treated naturally with vitamin C, the results were extraordinarily different. The group treated with vitamin C recovered in three to five days, and the group that was treated with Western medicine was in the hospital for up to a month for most of them. And, and many of the ones in the hospital died, and the ones with vi vitamin C, there was a very, very low death rate. Most, the vast majority recovered. So vitamin C, vitamin C, and also zinc, they say, for this particular illness, uh, those are very, very helpful. One of the other immune-boosting things we've talked about on our last couple of calls, and that's laughter. Smiling and laughter is known to boost the immune system. Very, very helpful uh, when we smile and we laugh. The endocrine system releases all the chemicals that help the immune system fight off disease. So please, whatever you do, spend as much time laughing as you possibly can. And uh, everybody's laughing in the room here. So um, the other thing is that Leslie recorded uh, 20 years ago, or over 20 years ago, Leslie recorded an audio called the New Thymus Chakra. It's an audio that's available on our web store at corelight.org, the new thymus chakra. And in, it's a brilliant audio. If you haven't heard it, um, I highly recommend it because the thymus is the key to fighting off illness. And this, um, this new thymus chakra is something that I, I can't even begin to tell you about it. We've just written a chapter uh, about this subject, so I, I only have time to just give you the overview. Um, if you want more information about it, you should really listen to the audio. Um, but it, it includes guided meditations to strengthen the thymus chakra, and it explains why the thymus and the new thymus chakra are so important for us now as light workers, as spiritual seekers, at this time when we're going to be faced with new illnesses like this. So highly, highly recommended uh, to get that, to re-listen to it if you already own it. Um, it really is helpful. Uh, I've used it myself. There are practical exercises you can do, meditations you can do, and so forth. Um, also to mention, just at a practical level, I, we sure, I'm sure most of us know that one of the things that reduces uh, the ability of the body to fight off disease that, re that uh, hurts the immune system the most is stress. And that includes fear and panic and being in survival mode. Those things weaken the immune system more than anything else. So being in meditation, remaining calm and peaceful, uh, laughing, all of those things boost the immune system. So Anyway, enjoy that. I, I hope we can all practice that in the days, weeks, however long is to come with this. Um, I also just want to take a moment to say, I guess this is my, my intuition, and it's also many of the trusted psychics and seers and teachers that I, that I know and love are saying similar things. And so I just want to kind of conclude our conversation here with this. Uh, and that is that there's more to come. You know, this is a milestone moment facing this virus. As we said before, you know, it's going to change everything. Nothing will be the same. And this is one milestone and there are going to be more. So it's not to be depressing about it. It's not to be morbid or anything like that. It's just so that we can all be aware that we're being gifted. We're being gifted with these um, crises, if you want to call them crises, or opportunities to go through the change. And who knows what they're going to look like. I, I don't think they all have to be disastrous. But there are going to be things happening, you know, maybe one a year or who knows how often. But things are going to be happening to help support us in this shift that we've all been praying for. We've been praying for so long. We've set our intentions for so long that we want the change. We want the new paradigm of the heart to birth on earth. And this is it. 
this is what it looks like. This is what the birthing looks like. And it might be a painful birth, but it's happening. And when the baby's born, we are all going to be ecstatic. And the truth is we can be ecstatic even amidst the contractions. So um, we've been prepared for this for some of us for decades. Others uh, of us have been on the path for a shorter amount of time, but we have prepared for this. We've been preparing for this, and it's all here to serve us on our personal and collective awakening. So we're at the beginning. We're at the beginning of a massive shift in the collective consciousness. And it's critical in these times to see the gift and the opportunity that we're being presented with right now. And I, I'm just going to throw out a few more things that I've noticed are gifts and opportunities of this time. And I'm sure we all have. And I invite you when we open up the microphone to sharing uh, and questions, I invite you to put into our sacred circle here tonight, today, this morning for most of you, um, it's nighttime in South Africa, but I invite you to put into the circle, what are the gifts and the opportunities that you see? What are you experiencing? And some of the ones that I've noticed are, uh, I think the most obvious one is, is the slowing down. You know, we're watching the slowing down of the systems and we're getting to reflect we're getting to reflect on things like the preciousness of life. When we're faced with a, an illness like this, we get to remember that life in a human body is a gift. It's not an entitlement. Life, as a friend of mine here in the living room says, life is a blink. You know, it, it's gone quickly. And so we get to remember right now, every moment is precious. And the life is precious. So, so that's what we get to enjoy right now. The preciousness of our free time, the preciousness of life, uh, the preciousness of nature. And I've been reading, I'm sure most of you have, that in Wuhan, China, uh, NASA has, has shown pictures that suddenly the, the skies are clear after just a, a couple, three months or whatever it's been. Of, of shutting the factories down and the freeways down and et cetera, the skies are clear again. The waterways in Venice, Italy are clear enough now that the dolphins have returned and wildlife has returned. So there's less noise, less pollution. We get time with our loved ones. We get time at home. Um, we get time for self-care. Uh, meditation and yoga and being in nature and reading and all the wonderful things that we love so much that in our busyness we never have time for. So I, I'm just like, this is amazing, you know. So this is a great gift that we're all being given here. So, okay, I think I'm going to stop now. I could go on, but I feel like it's uh, 10 after the hour, and I want to make sure we have time for sharing and questions. So, So before we open up, Barbara, is, what would you like to share? Do you have anything you'd like to, to talk with us about? And I'm just going to uh, unplug my yeah. headset. I just want to unplug okay. my headset so yeah, my yeah. friends in the living room here can hear. So hold on. Okay, Barbara, go ahead. Okay, great, Brad. And I'm just going to talk for a, a second. For yep, there's feedback. So I'm going to mute your side, Brad, while I share. Okay, cause, so we don't have any feedback. I know how distracting that is. And um, I'm just really feeling uh, into this exquisitely beautiful energy. There's so much to share, and I'm going to do my very darndest to keep it as brief as I can so that those of you who are also wanting to share have an opportunity to do so. Uh, one of the first things that I'd love to say, first of all, is thank you, my beloved Leslie and Brad, and all in Core Light. We have been so well prepared for this journey, and um, I am so deeply, deeply grateful. Um, boy, so much more to share about that, but I just want to just say thank you and so feel all the love, the connection, the support. 
uh, that has uh, been building over the years in all of the teachings, Leslie. Uh, there's just no words to express the deep, deep appreciation for your love and guidance for the guides who have come through you, who have held us so lovingly for so many years. It's been 22 years for me that I have sat with you. Um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about the collective consciousness, the dark night of the soul that everyone is now going through or many of us are now going through. And individually, those of us who have been with Leslie have gone through probably more than one dark night of the soul. And I know that this last go-around has, has felt very long for me anyway. Um, so we're not unfamiliar with this, not unfamiliar with the downward spiral, and not unfamiliar with how to develop and strengthen the witness. And in a guided meditation the other night, uh, actually on the uh, equinox, I was shown that this is the time uh, for Mother Earth to fully open her crown chakra. And we, as a collective, are joining in with that crown chakra opening. We're all midwifing, helping to birth this crown chakra opening. And what I saw, uh, the images that I saw were uh, individual crowns were expanding out into the universe. And to me, they looked like um, upside down chandeliers uh, of uh, these little uh, golden lights that were spiraling out and out. And I could see it individually, and then I could see all of us around the globe with all of our crown chakras open, contributing to the collective opening of Mother Earth in our awakening. And nine months from now, uh, there is going to be a profound uh, astrological event. And I, forgive me, I don't remember. There's so much information going through that it's just uh, amazing. But I know that at the end of December, there's some profound astrological event that will be occurring. But we are going to keep spiraling through uh, this cycle with the Pluto-Jupiter um, conjunction for uh, three times this one and two more times after this before that uh, profound moment happens. And if you will count between March and December, that's nine months. So we are at the point of inception of this new birth. So I'm really wanting uh, to, to the awareness of this new birth, this opportunity for each and every one of us who have truly been prepared for this time to help each other and be the midwives for this new birth. And, um, and what I've been shown is the way to do this is through gratitude. And when the fear and the panic arise uh, to uh, find things to be grateful for, for the next breath, for the light of the sun, for our beloved animals, for the flowers. Um, and so to come together in the power of one. And the other little piece that I really want to share is that uh, since this has all happened, many of you know I am, uh, and I know that many of us on the call are huge empaths. So to take this kind of shock and shattering through the system uh, can be uh, a little uh, overwhelming. And um, so um, uh, to really be present with the breath in each moment and say hello to those frozen parts of us who are scared and to ask and allow our uh, parent or our uh, high self to step in and do the parenting with those parts of us that are truly scared, rather than trying to shut them up or deny them or make them go away, to comfort them, as Brad has so beautifully done with each and every one of us today. And as I started to go through this shattering, uh, a, a little frog showed up at my front door. 
and it has been chirping nonstop since Monday night. And it's very interesting that on this call today, the frog is not chirping. This is the first silence that the, that the frog has been in for any length of time. It, it will stop for a moment, but then it picks up again. And I'm hearing mantras from the frog. I'm hearing the frog saying, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And then he'll, the frog will switch to, I love you. I love you. I love you. And it reminded me uh, of the cricket song, the God's cricket song. When I first sat with Leslie, she played or someone brought in uh, a recording of God's cricket song. And if any of you haven't heard it, I would highly encourage you to listen to it. Someone took uh, songs of crickets and slowed them way down. And when you listen to it, it sounds like a choir of human voices singing their praises to the divine. And I'm calling on each and every one of you to join me in singing our praises to the divine. We have become so separate and felt so isolated. Isn't it interesting that they're calling this a social uh, isolation? But it's not a social isolation. It's a physical isolation. And we're more connected than ever in the stillness. And I know that we can all feel it. So um, uh, there was one other thing that I wanted to share, and then I'll let it go here. Um, we're needing to help our inner frozen children by giving them a voice and staying in the witness and letting them share. They've not really properly been parented before, and they haven't learned. We haven't been taught how to self-soothe. And so we're being asked now to become the parent to our frozen child or children and let them know we're here for them, that they're not alone. And the last thing I wanted to share, Brad shared about the vitamin C, and I would like to share about a natural um, herbal uh, um, supplement that's called Terry, T-E-R-R-Y, naturally, Anxiocom, A-N-X-I-O-Com. And this is for anti-stress, for anxiety and stress relief. <laughs> and um, I think I think my dog is saying, yes, you need that. So um, I think that uh, for those of us who really are super sensitive, who are needing a little additional support at this time, um, you might be interested in doing that. And just please know, everyone, that we are all in this together and that uh, I am here for you. I know Brad and Leslie are here. And if there's anyone who is feeling the need to reach out, please don't hesitate. So thank you so, so much. I can see, Brad, that there are a couple of other hands raised. I'm going to unmute you, Brad. And thank you. Thank you, Barbara. So that was beautiful. Can you thank hear me okay? You. I can, Brad. And I just Thanks for your share. love you all so much. Thank you, Brad. And we loved hearing from your dog, too. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to join in. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and laughter. Laughter is such healing, healing yeah. medicine. Watch things that are, that are funny, read things, share with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Brad, so um, there are hands raised. Are you ready? Shall I? Yes, please go ahead. Please okay, call on people. Here I'd love we to go. Hear from everybody. Let, before, before you do, Barbara, let yep. me just say we have, we have over 100 people on the call today, and there's obviously not going to be enough time for everybody to share. So while we want you to share, and we want you to share everything you'd like to share, we would ask you to please keep it as concise as you possibly can so that we can have more people share. 
Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. And I'll also check on the Q&A. I know that some people were on the call really early and were writing things in, so we'll try to get to as many of those as we can as well. So here's the first and caller, did you, Brad. Did, yeah. Barbara, did you, did you tell people how to raise their hand? Did I miss that? Oh, sorry. No, I didn't, Brett. Thank you for the reminder. If you'd like to share, it's star two to raise your hand. Yeah, sharing or we questions. Had so many, or we had so many people raising their hands. I was like, oh, I must have said it. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. First one. And it looks like this is Theodore and Marie. It looks like this is Theodore Marie. Hi. Have the mic. Have the mic. Uh, Barbara, I think you've muted yourself and Marie. Okay, Hi. Marie, you're unmuted now. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I'm on. Okay, great. Oh, I'm on, Hi. Okay. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear Hello? you. Hello. Okay, great. Um, I just wanted to say thank. First of all, thank you, Brad and Leslie and Barbara for uh, facilitating this, and um, I really, really, really appreciate it. And I'm sure everybody else does who's on the call, and people who will be listening later. So. Um, I normally listen to the recordings, um, but I felt moved, of course, um, through the circumstances to be here live today. And um, so I just wanted to express my thanks first. And, um, yeah, we're in unprecedented times right now. So uh, my question is, like, for me personally, <clears throat> my little ego life, and then also, like, for the world. But... Um, this reminds me, like, I'm coming up soon to my second Saturn return, and my first one, there, this is kind of paralleling where I was getting, because Saturn is in my Aquarius, which is in my 10th house, which is, like, career and status. And even at that time, I guess a long time ago now, <laughs> I was at a cusp of doing really well in my career, and my life kind of uh, blew up with having to leave where I was living in London and move very quickly back to Chicago. And so I just had to leave everything and abandon it all. And it was very devastating and take, took me decades really to crawl back from. And I really felt like I was finally, after years of struggle, um, climbing back from that with work and having my career take off as an actor and being on television and doing theater my son who grew up to become a dancer. He was about to go to Australia and had his career finally start after quite a bit of struggle after he graduated from college. And now everything is gone. And I just feel like I just can't catch a break. <laughs> and I don't quite know what, I don't know what I'm supposed to be learning anymore. Um, it's just, yeah, I don't, things that go on in the world are beyond me. I can't impact any of that. So I guess I just, I don't know. I guess I, 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 I don't, I don't know. I'm trying, I'm trying to be positive. That's not my nature, but I'm trying to be positive. And, um, I'm just having a very, very, very hard time seeing why this is all happening again. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I don't I don't understand, I guess. Well, um sorry Marie, I was muted there. Um uh, so let okay. me respond to you. Um first of all I'm I'm so sorry to hear that you're going through such a hard time and I, I certainly can uh understand why you would feel how you're feeling. It's just hard. And I know many people on the call will resonate with where you're at because everybody is going through some kind of loss. Um, loss is part of this. Um, and, uh, you know, loss is part of, of change. Whenever we change, there's the, the death of an old way and something new awaits us. So I feel like, um, you know, it's important to remember that w while you're going through this change, the big question you can ask that you can ask yourself is how do you cope with the change? What are you going to do 
to cope with the change. And, um, you know, at, at Corelight, as you know, I know you've been around for a while, and the, the main way that we work with uh, change is through the egoic processing methods. We, we have the marriage of spirit book and the courses we offer and there are so many ways nowadays uh, in the world, so many teachers, so many methods, so many ways to go through the changes of the world. So, you know, the old adage, when one door closes, another one opens, applies. And it's critical to remember uh, when, you're, when you're down, you know, when you're down that negative, uh, in the negative ego, you're down the downward spiral. Um, we tend, to, all of us, we tend to go into this victim place of, yeah, I'm not doing it right. I must be bad or wrong or something terrible has happened to me. Something's just not right here. And that's natural. It's totally natural uh, for everyone on the planet mm-hmm. to have that. So mm-hmm. the, way, the way through it is to process those emotions, process those feelings, name them, process them. Let them pass through. Don't hold on to them. And look for the gift and the opportunity. What is it? What is the open door? What's the next phase for you? What is your higher self leading you towards? And there's another old adage. Somebody said, attitude determines altitude. And what that means is, you know, it doesn't really matter what happens to us in life. What matters is how we respond to it, how we react, and how much we can remember our witness, who we truly are, and how much we can respond with a joyful attitude. Um, I'm not saying to suppress suppress the negative emotion, not what we're talking about, but um, life can be, we can, the Dalai Lama said, we can, something like, we can even enjoy life amidst great hardship. I look at him as an example because he's somebody who's been through one of the biggest hardships anyone can ever go through. He has witnessed the genocide of his people. And this is a man who practices making other people joyful. I mean, he's, he's a, he is an embodiment of joy and love and wisdom. So I hold him as an example because if anybody can go through that kind of hardship and victimization and come out the other side with such love and radiance and compassion and joy, um, that to me says a lot. So anyway, I, I offer that to you and to anybody on the call who resonates with this as one example, something to hold on to. I, I hope that helps. It, it, it does. I mean, Whenever I see those kind of people, though, I don't see them on any, I don't see myself on any, like, level with them. I think (laughs) as a child, I went through, like, a war. Everything was stripped from me, and I came back from that barely, barely. And some days I'm still just hanging on now. And um, I guess a part of me, I, I was able to get through it because I had hope that there would be better days or and now I just kind of feel like that hope and everything that I struggled through was in vain because if it was just to come to this, I don't to the point of it. I know it's like the worst thing in the world can be a victim or feel like you're being victimized. But I guess if I'm being honest, if I'm being really honest, I do. I feel like this is. I hear you, Marie. I know. And you and I have talked personally. We've talked personally about this many times. And and I I have so much compassion for you. I I know what you're going through. And when when we have those when we have those childhood traumas, um, you know, that can shape the rest of our lives. And and so what's critical is to uh, find a therapist, find somebody you trust and you love who will help you, who will hold your hand and walk you through those old childhood traumas so that you can clear them out for good. So I I feel like that's probably going to be very important for you, that you find some way to do some real deep childhood clearing because that's what's coming up for you. With the current loss, it's triggering all those uh, 
resonant chords from the childhood traumas. Right. Yeah, well, thank you. I've been trying that for umpteen years. It hasn't worked so far. I find this miraculous person that I, you know, then maybe, but I, I, I don't know. I just can't have to be perfect and have all my traumas taken away and everything be, that's just, I don't think that's going to happen anymore. I, I, I don't know. I just want to live. I don't know if I can clear all that stuff. It hasn't happened. And can I, can I make a, a suggestion? Sure. I offer something as a as a possibility uh, because I can really feel you and your pain and you have so much wisdom to share. And it's interesting, before you started talking about your childhood, I had this vision of you on YouTube reading to the children and sharing in your acting ability and sharing what you, your journey of what you've been through and how you could help to nurture them as you have learned how to nurture yourself. So I, I, I just offer that as a possibility. That's that's what showed up. And so maybe sometimes when we're so deep in it, if we can reach out and help other people uh, in what they're in, it, it sort of can take us out of ourselves and look at the bigger picture and, and, and offer help. And I know that you have much wisdom and much guidance to share. Thank you. Well, You're welcome. I think, yeah. I think that's a beautiful, beautiful suggestion. And, and uh, uh, Marie, I, I think we need to move on. We've got a, a whole bunch of other hands. So let us, let us move on. And we're just going to send you so much love. We send you uh, blessings and love and hope that you can move through this with as much grace and ease as possible. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. We really appreciate hearing from you. Next hand raised is Chris. Chris, you have the mic. Hi, everybody. Um, hey, Brad. I, I first want to Chris. say, um, Brad. hello. <laughs> A big huge gratitude to huge Brad gratitude. for um, that amazing guided meditation at the very at the beginning. Man, if we had that every day to practice. Um, and I think we hopefully can if you upload it someplace on the website. Um, it, I think it, it's transformational. So b beautiful, beautiful practice. So thank you. And um, also echoing Barbara's sentiment to Leslie, just how utterly, how much gratitude I have uh, to Leslie and also everyone in Core Light. So thank you, thank you, thank you during this time for being so responsive and loving to all of us. Um, and uh, I, I do want to keep this brief. Um, as you were talking, Brad, I completed writing a song. And for me, of course, uh, chanting and music has been sort of the, the focal point of my coping uh, with life in general, even before all of this chaos happened. But um, I, I was hoping, and it may not be possible, to share some verses with you uh, over the phone. Um, but I do want to also be mindful of our time. But mostly the verse is really about change and about um, being like the lotus on the river uh, floating, which was a metaphor from a colleague of mine who's a teacher of Buddhism at Harvard, and um, how much that represents this sweet balance of moving into the future of change. Um, so lyrics of the song, which I'm calling Lotus on the River, uh, have to do with that really inspired by your words, Brad, and uh, anyway, so if there's time or with your encouragement, I'd be happy to share a couple of verses, but I also know we have to get on to other folks too, so I'll leave that up to you guys. Um, no, Chris, please, please share. I would say go for it right now. We'd love to hear. Yes? Okay, here goes. Stronger than water, softer than steel, a lotus on the river allows me to feel a balance of senses, the silence to heal, the whispers of future, the calling to How you gonna break this fall in your mind? Namo Bhagavate. How you gonna bring your heart to the light? Namo 
my shaggy. I'm gonna break this out in your life. Love of Bhagavad Gonna bring your heart to the light. Next verse. <laughs> my phone keeps shutting off. With so many blessings scattered around me. With too many moments I miss for the trees. Medicine guru in a luminous sea of lapis lazuli. For this wounded refugee So how you gonna break this fall in your mind? Oh, Namo Bhagavate How you gonna bear your heart to the light? Namo Guru Vaishaji How you gonna break this fall in your mind? Oh, Namo Bhagavate are you gonna bear your heart to the light? Namo Guru Vaishaji. Oh. Only surrender to what you can be. We only surrender to what we can be. Only surrender. What you can be We only surrender To what we can be So Thank you for the opportunity to share that And dedicate it to everyone on this call Wow Thank you so much Chris That was beautiful We're, We're all in bliss here in our living room Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and all the best to you. And to you Thank too. You. We all send you love. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Chris. This is what is uh, so needed. It's filling our souls, Chris, as you sing this beautiful song. We sing with you. Okay. The next hand raised. Well, maybe I should go to the Q&A real quick. Um Let's see. Uh, Bella says, uh, I feel this isolation time is a period when creativity can, quote, save the day. Find your creativity, even if it's simply making great food. The waters and air in Italy are becoming clear and clean, even supporting wildlife without the fossil fuel pollution. This is also a time of earth wisdom. Use antiseptic herbs for your own environment that help your respiratory system, even culinaries like thyme, oregano, and rosemary. Try to breathe clean air. And Lynn says, please give attention to the earth healing as all these unfoldings, and she's talking about the dolphins playing in the canals too. Um, And uh, Audrey says the earth is better able to take an in-breath and an out breath. So beautiful, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all, Thank for, your you all three of you for Yes. Sharing. Yes. Yes, we can really feel that. Um, so the next hand raised, um, I'm going to open your mic. So if you've raised your hand, say hello because there's no identification. I don't know who this is. So say hello and we'll see who, who we hear. Hi, that might be me. Yes, it <laughs> is. <laughs> this is Connie. <laughs> Connie Habash, hi. Hi, Thank Connie. You, Barbara and Brad and Leslie and everyone holding this beautiful energetic space. Um, so what's going on for me, and I imagine other people on the call are experiencing this too, is I'm having some physical symptoms. Um, about a week and a half ago, I started to have heart palpitations and finally went to urgent care, not the place I really wanted to go to right now. <laughs> Um, four days ago and found out it's hyperthyroid. And so I'm I'm making, as we were all talking, I'm making a list of polarities to, to do squares on. And I'm also going to look at fifth chakra in the, um, what is it, Becoming Oneness, the book about the seven chakras. 
Um, but I'm wondering, I think that I've taken on some of the collective fear, and I'm trying to clear it out of my body because before I was having this, I didn't feel particularly scared about everything. I was just kind of in flow. Um, so if you have suggestions of other things, I mean, I'm trying to like energetically clear myself, but other things that I might do to clear any collective fear that I may have taken on empathically. Uh, thank you, Connie. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thanks, Brad. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm going through a process of muting myself and unmuting myself, so I apologize to any uh, people who are sharing, and I don't respond right away. So, yeah, um, well, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry to hear that you're going through that. And um, like you said, I mean, you really don't want to go to urgent care if you don't have to right now. Um, what I could, you know, what comes there, there are many things I could share, but the one of the things that comes to mind, in case that's helpful, um, Leslie always talked with me about when she was doing the uh, collective shadow work, um, when she would do a darshan uh, for two or three hundred people, or when there was maybe a war happening or something was going on, and and she was aware that she was taking larger energies through her system um occasionally you know not always but occasionally she would have to just lie down and spend uh, a day or a few days or however long in bed and just meditate and allow the energy to move through sometimes it was um, through walking we would we would walk or exercise swim to get the energy to move through her body um a lot of times it was about processing um, so, uh, what, what she told me, what I asked her, you know, occasionally it was really hard for her. I watched her suffer. There was even a time where she, after we got back from Israel, uh, she had to have her gallbladder removed and it was clear that it was as a result of some, uh, taking collective shadow through her body in the Middle East. And, um, what she would say to me, I, well, I would ask her, I would say, well, you know, what is what is the gift for you in this? Um, this can't be just a one way street. That's, you know, that's not the new paradigm. That's not how it works. And I know, you know, that there's something in this for you too, or you wouldn't be doing it. It's not a self-sacrifice thing. And what she would say to me is um, the gift that I receive in this work is that I get to see places where I might still have a, a very uh, a shred of something to work on, some kind of uh, egoic process to work on, maybe from childhood or some kind of patterning or some place where she got hooked on the energy. She said if it passed through and she did, wasn't affected, she knew she was clear. But maybe if um, she was really maybe just a little upset about some of the unfairness or you know, uh, I'm thinking of the the war uh, situation in the Middle East that obviously, you know, it's difficult to be completely neutral about that, to watch the suffering of other people and um, not get hooked in a little bit. So as an example, uh, you know, she would say, well, that's a place where I have to work on witnessing more. It's a place where I have to learn to stand on the edge of the pit and reach my hand down and not jump down in the pit with everybody else. So, uh, because that doesn't serve. So it was her opportunity when she felt um, physical symptoms, when she felt, you know, something happening in the body that was uncomfortable. Um, she knew that she had some kind of work to do. And uh, I guess I bring, I, I'm sharing that with you just in case it, it's helpful. Um, you know, maybe there's some form of exercise or movement or meditation or being in nature or processing or whatever it is that you feel you need to do to help clear it out of your body. Does that help at all? Yes. I think um, what Barbara said earlier about working with some of the frozen parts of myself, probably there's some unconscious layers there to work with. And, um, yeah, I think that I think that I've gotten what I need. Yeah, but- all about that, yeah. So maybe, yeah. Maybe yeah. there's Good. maybe there's some more f- frozen children in there that you need to help yeah. move for, move through. 
Beautiful, beautiful, Connie. Thank and you. I'm so glad you came to that place and space of awareness because I was just reading that, you know, we need to be consciously aware of what we are thinking because would we share with young children all the fears and tribulations that we are aware of on the planet? And would we go into that fear space with that child or those children and share that? And that's what we're doing with our own inner children. Mm -hmm. And the gift of that is they're starting to rise up and let us know they're there. Through panic attacks, through, you know, um, uh, heart uh, irregular heartbeat or whatever it is, uh, um, they're saying, I need reassurance. I'm scared. And most of us didn't have that growing up. So now is our opportunity to give them a voice mm. and to be the parent to them that they never knew. We know how to do that now. And how would we comfort our own children? We need to comfort our inner children in the same way. So this is a wonderful opportunity. And Connie, I'm so grateful that you brought it up because I've gone through the same physical symptoms. I've gone through panic attacks and I'm, I'm actually vibrating right now and I am loving the parts of me that are scared right now and I'm holding them and I'm welcoming them into the collective heart with all of you. We're safe. We're safe here. So thank you, Connie. Thank you. Thank you. And Leslie just uh, wrote a one-word message for you, Connie. She said, love. Oh, thank you so much, <laughs> Leslie. That's it. I feel that. Yeah, so just love those children, love yourself, love the situation, love your way through it. Yeah. Okay, so the next caller is also anonymous, so I am opening your mic, so please say hello and we'll find out who you are. Hello, your uh, mic Bob is open. Hello, Barbara. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? You can hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. It's Lynn, Barbara. And oh, Brad, Lynn. And, uh, Hi, uh, Lynn. Yeah, and uh, I just want to say uh, thank you to Leslie and to Brad and to you, Barbara. Uh, I am so um, honored and grateful to have, um, you know, newly uh, for me come to the three of you and to be part of this group. It's just, I feel, you know, deep in my heart, with all my heart, it's it's um, such a gift and it, you know, just destiny just happening at just the right time. And I'm just so darn grateful and I just want to tell you that and that I love you. Um, and um also, I'm just <laughs> marveling at the accelerated, um, all the all the acceleration of of these you know beautiful insights and gifts and awakening that I've had in the last in, in the recent couple of years, the last couple of years, and just seems to be speeding up by the day. And um, I'm very conscious of the time. So the other thing that I wanted to uh, say, since Brad brought up when he first started to speak today um, that, uh, you know, people are feeling that um, death happening to them uh, is a failure. And um, I just would like to share the gift that I've been given uh, to know with great certainty um, that it's not a failure, it's a graduation. And we're and we're going where we came from. We're going home. So that was the other thing that I highlighted. And um, second to second to second is what I'm being guided uh, to do. You know, slowing down even more so than I usually do, and uh, going second to second. And I'll give you a little example of that. Um, we're allowed to go to the grocery store, and here in California. 
and uh, but not allowed to come within more closer than six feet of each other. And we have a manager. Um, we have a few managers in our local store. And I, as an empath, as most of us are, um, I looked at this uh, lady, Cindy, and um, I just felt so strongly that she was coming apart at the seams because she's working so hard and she's trying so hard. She always does, but especially now. And she just, um, you know, is with some people I can't, I didn't see any of this myself, an example of it, but, you know, they're just yelling and screaming at her, why isn't there more of this, why isn't there more of that, and, um, you know, she she was so hurt by it, um, and also probably physically all worn out, so I couldn't hug her, um, but I just talked to her for a few minutes, and I just said, you know, and I said to all of them, you know, thank you. You're doing uh, such a service. You're, you know, you're you're brave soldiers out on the out on the out on the battlefield at the front of the battlefield, and um, I thank you because you know we're all, uh, you know, we don't know from one second uh, what's happening, um, what what really is happening. You know, people are walking around asymptomatic and have this thing. Um, and, um, you know, anyone who's going to work, I mean, they could say, um, uh, you know, I'm too frightened and I'm in peril, so the heck with my job. I'm not going to, I'm not going to go to work. Uh, but they were all there and they were all trying. But this one lady in particular, Cindy, um, you know, she, I just, uh, felt her, how, I felt that pain that and and she was just crushed and also her nerves were frayed and she was physically worn out. So I just you know held her in love and um, you know just that, that's how I'm going you know from uh, from second yeah, to second to second and I and I'm I, I, and my friend who's a uh, I have a few friends that are brilliant musicians but um, my friend Tony Desaire. Uh, as you know, Barbara, he decided to uh, record from his home studio because his tour was canceled uh, a song every day, and he's calling them the Quarantine Diaries. And I, I sent one to you, and I'll, and I he is more than happy, and I am more than happy uh, to send uh, to, to send them off by messenger to anyone who would like to hear them because they're each beautiful. And his beautiful little boy climbs up on his lap with his with his dad, and then he's told, "Well, get down and go play your video games." But um, Tony has decided, you know, that's what he wants that's to do to keep sane and to share his music. And his music is so beautiful, and his voice is so beautiful. So from Highland Falls, New York, um, uh, that's where uh, that's where Tony is in his recording every day. Every day, a new song, taking suggestions, Beautiful. sending out. Beautiful, so, Lynn. Anybody who wants them, I, I will be happy to um, see that they get out to them. Thank you so much for sharing that all, Lynn. And you're reminding me that so many of us are becoming our better angels. And thank you, Lynn, for becoming a better angel in this world. Aw, So uh, we still have some more calls, uh, Brad, but it feels like time is rapidly running out here. So, well, if we if we have somebody, if we have if we have somebody from Brazil who's raised their hand, I would like to hear from somebody from Brazil. So, do you show anybody there? We do, Brad. I we do. So it's Edmar. Edmar, you have the mic. Hey, can can you hear, Barbara? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Hello, okay. Edmar. Thank you a lot. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Hi, my friend. I'm okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm funny. Um, trying to be short in here. That's kind of crap to us. But, Brad, uh, a long ago, you made me a question here in Brazil. And uh, the question was, what were my thoughts about why... Uh, you and Leslie were guided to come to this country so many times so long ago. And I kept that 
question for many years until now. And before the call, that was the question I had yet and uh, looking for the answer. So um, this, uh, the answer for your question for me many years came out on your speech in this morning, although, or in the morning, in the beginning, uh, although you had, we have spoken so much about this. So uh, the answer that came to me is, you came here to Brazil to prepare us, the, 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 the few people that say it can be hundreds, hundreds in here, but it's few yet, for a special moment, uh, and help us to be, to raise our thoughts, our inner power, to balance the negative momentum that we are living in million of people, okay? I hope you can understand that. Uh, uh, it, it's about the book you mentioned in the beginning and the power of our thoughts, the power versus force, okay? So uh, that's the feeling I have today and more than a thank you for you, Leslie, and the whole group uh, is to say that we are proud of being part of this group that you raised in this country for this difficult moment in every country, but in our country, we have been struggling for years. And while I was asking, uh, uh, listening right now, the people speaking and talking, also came to me that more this, on, on this subject is that uh, for everyone that is in this call, that are part of this group that surround Brad and Leslie and Barbara and others and ourselves is for this momentum. We were also guided to be part of this group, but it brings to us a big responsibility, the good sense of this, okay, that we learned for many years and for perhaps days, perhaps months, but in years and decades, as a decade, as you said, and we have a special, uh, uh, we are, we have this special task in this momentum that is to use our tools, what we learn, and through the energy is to balance so much negative thoughts that are raised into the media and whatever. But also, I, I think that's the message and uh, that came is that we have a big uh, job right now that's keep our energy and help the world through, throughout whatever have happened, uh, learn with you, okay? That was, mm -hmm. thank you a lot. Thank you all of you and I'm, I'm proud of being part of this whole group from Brazil and worldwide. Mm. Oh, thank you so you much, can, Edgemore. You can <laughs> rephrase what I said because it's very <laughs> not necessary. <laughs> it's like oh. Oh. We understood you. We we could understand mm. you, and um, it was beautiful. It touched our hearts deeply. Leslie is nodding her head, and she mm -hmm. just I, I know. Um, we're all in this with you. Any Anybody who has been a part of the Corelight community for any period of time feels what you're feeling. And, and I think I speak for everybody <clears throat> when I say we can't imagine what life would be like without all the spiritual principles and tools that Leslie taught us for 30 years because um, it has prepared us. As you said, it's prepared us for this time. And I know she was only, uh, we, we were only in Brazil for about 10 years, but um, not quite 10 years, but it had such an impact on our lives that we feel that go, coming to Brazil and meeting you and meeting the group there um, and having our books published there it was one of the highlights of our entire lives. Um, Leslie speaks so highly about Brazil. Uh, we know that Brazil is the country or at least one of the countries that's holding the global heart. Um, that's 
what you guys do there. You all, the Brazilians, know how to live in the heart. You know how to love. And we had never experienced anything like that until we came to Brazil. So our lives would not have been nearly as enriched as as if we hadn't gone to Brazil. So uh, so we thank you. We thank you and we thank all our Brazilian friends for showing up. And, uh, you know, here we are, all of us, no matter what country we're from, we're in this place of this great opportunity to make a difference. You know, we have the difference to live a joyful life amidst the difficulties. We can be the shining beacon for other people. I mean, imagine when people, when so many people are in fear and panic, and there you are with a smile on your face and a sparkle in your eye, and you're, you're joyful and you're loving and you're having compassion. That is going to make the biggest difference in the birth of the new paradigm more than anything else. So um, this is the opportunity we're all being given right now, is to hold that heart space, to choose love, to choose love, to choose the light in the darkness, to, um, to act in service, to act in joy, to be the example, to be the change that we want to see in the world. So uh, thank you, Edgemore. Thank you for bringing that up and giving me an excuse to talk about this. You're making a big difference there. Uh, all of our Brazilian friends are making a huge difference in the world right now. And I know it's especially hard in Brazil right now. People there are going through a very, very difficult time with many things, not just the virus, uh, the economic collapse and the, the, the way the government is behaving and so forth. And, you know, it's true all over the world. Every country has its own flavor of shadow that's up right now. So um, this is our opportunity. It's our time to show up. And as I said on one of the calls recently, we, the spiritual seekers of the world, this is our time to thrive. Yes. We're going to thrive. We're going in the next decade as these challenges present themselves and the system, the old system dies and the new system is born. We have the opportunity to thrive. These are going to be the best years of our lives because we'll be able to, to come uh, to, to do what we came here for. This is what we incarnated for. So we're going to be living our soul's purpose by loving and, and knowing more and more that that's who we are. That we are the love. And we get, so I'm we aware. Get to mirror that. We get to mirror that to any and everyone. Yes. Thank you, Barbara. And yeah, that's our Brad, gift, right? Yes, that is our gift. And if, if it would be okay with you, I would just love to read a couple of shares that really go right hand in hand with exactly what you're saying. That's great. So let, let's read those two shares, and then, or however many, and then let's uh, wrap it up. We'll have our final guided meditation. I think it's okay. We're going over time a little bit, but it, it feels yeah. like that's okay. So let's just do that. Yes. We'll, we'll try definitely. to wrap it up as quickly as possible. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Brad. So Serena you, Brad. writes. So Serena writes. Well, hold on. I've got to mute you, Brad. Okay. There we go. I don't think there's any feedback now. Okay. So Serena writes, a few days before the news of the coronavirus, I was astounded how much energy of love from all of nature, our Mother Earth, is supporting all of us during this time. And I feel a liberation happening as I have been very stuck within myself on every level for a long time. My heart is opening and my joy has been growing and people are smiling and connecting more than I have ever seen before. I feel so encouraged. The support is there. It's letting go of all the old ways. I have nothing to lose. I am on board for this new life. Oh, my, Serena. My, my heart is filled to overflowing with that sheer Serena. Thank you. And the world is mirroring back to you, your radiant self, as you 
share that with everyone. Thank you, Serena. And Carol uh, Harbard says, I caught the happy virus last night when I was out singing beneath the stars. It is remarkably contagious. So kiss me, Hafiz. Thank you all for this beautiful field. Thank you, Carol. In such deep, deep gratitude to each and every one of you. So exquisitely beautiful. All right, Brad. Wow. That's it. Well, with beautiful, beautiful final shares to end our call on. Thank you so much, um, Serena and Carol. Beautiful. And thank you to everybody. I'm sorry that we didn't get to take all the hands. And um, hopefully you'll join us for the next Spiritual Weather Report in a couple of weeks. And we'll call on you then, and you can share with us then. And and so I, I just, Barbara, I want to thank you, and I want to thank everybody for showing up today. This has been a beautiful, powerful call. So let's um, let's close with uh, just a very brief guided meditation and prayer. Um, it'll be less than five minutes, hopefully. So I invite you now to close your eyes and get comfortable, and let's take a few long, deep breaths and come back into our center. I know talking stirs up the energy, and we start thinking a lot. So. Let's all come back into that place where we were at the beginning of the call. Deep sense of peace inside as you breathe. The long, slow, deep breaths activate the vagus nerve, which runs down the length of the spine and triggers our bodily response of relaxation. So long, slow, deep inhales. Long, slow, deep exhales. Let's all tap in again to the Shishumna, to the core, the core light within us, the central meridian. Let's tune in to that place where we feel our bodies as the center point between heaven and earth. I invite you to just go yin, just deeply relax and let go and receive the beautiful transmission of energy that is coming through right now for us. Feel it and receive and let go of any shadow, any tension you might be holding on to. So let's all visualize ourselves holding hands in a circle, even though we're connected virtually. Let's let's really see it in our mind's eye physically as much as you possibly can. Feel yourself holding hands with somebody on either side of you, forming a big circle. It's a circle that surrounds the earth. We're so big that we can hold hands and put the whole earth right in the center of our circle. Feel the love that we share. Feel the heart energy that we're sending through our arms and our hands to each other, connecting us all in the heart all around the world. And now I'd like, I invite all of us to visualize everybody on the earth, all the humans, all the plants and animals, all the life forms on earth, waters, minerals, all the life that's thriving on the planet, even despite the pollution, despite the illnesses, the wars, hardships. Just see all the life that's being lived. See it as little lights of activity, however you want to visualize it, but just see it all there on the planet. And now visualize the virus. You might have seen pictures of it online. 
but visualize this virus also moving amongst us on Earth. Just see that it's there in humans and animals, wherever it is. And now let's send it love. Let's send love to the virus. And let's bless the virus. And even if you can, thank it and feel gratitude for the gift that it brings, for, it, for its purpose that it brings to earth and to each of us. Let's all remember that the virus has this purpose. And the, the, the purpose of the virus is to help us change. It's a wake-up call. It's to help us awaken spiritually, to make changes in our lives, to shake us up. And let's recognize that this virus will return to the light when it completes its purpose. As soon as it's finished, it's gone. It'll disappear just as quickly as it came. So we thank it, we bless it, and we send it love. And we're surrounding the planet with all our love and compassion for all those who are in pain and suffering as a result of the virus. So see the energy streaming out of your heart, so much love pouring out of your heart right into the planet, surrounding the earth, surrounding the people and plants and animals with your love. Give it a color. Maybe it's pink, golden white, whatever you choose, but see it surrounding the earth and penetrating all the life that's lived on earth. So as you do this, as you practice this, we offer our deep gratitude to the Great Spirit, to the Creator, Mother, Father, God, Goddess, all that is. We offer our gratitude to all the beings in the invisible realms who surrounded us today in love and support in a beautiful cocoon of healing white light. We're deeply, deeply grateful for the love and the support that we receive from the invisible realms and for the love that we share with each other and this opportunity we're given to share time together today in the heart and to be in these beautiful bodies that we get to wear for a few precious years on this beautiful blue, fragile blue planet called Earth. We're so deeply grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alalaho. And I, I like to close with Alalaho. It's a Tibetan version of Amen, and it means, isn't it wonderful? Alalaho, isn't it wonderful? So I send you all my love, Leslie, and all my friends here in the living room. We're all sending our love to you. Many, many blessings. We wish you so much joy and um, wonderful experiences during this time, and we'll look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks you can join us for the next call. So all my love. Bye for now.